Well, g'day curd nerds. I'm Gavin from littlegreenworkshops.com.au and littlegreencheese.com and today we're going to be making asadero. As you can see, um, I have finished making the cheese already, but the cheese hails from Mexico um, and it's a traditional cheese down there. And it is a, uh, it's in the class of cheeses called pasta falada or stretch curd cheeses. Um, and I had a lot of fun stretching the curd um, while I was making this cheese. Really good fun. Anyway, let's see how we made it. And the ingredients are eight liters of non-homogenized full cream milk, quarter of a teaspoon of thermosphilic culture, 1.5 mil of calcium chloride in quarter of a cup of water, 1.5 mil of liquid rennet in quarter of a cup of water, a bowl of iced water, and some cool 18% saturated brine solution. Check out my brining video on how to make that. First of all, we bring the temperature up to 37 degrees Celsius or 99 Fahrenheit. at the right temperature now so then we're going to add the culture now it may sound like a lot of culture that's a quarter of a teaspoon but uh, this is a pasta filata cheese as I mentioned a stretchy curd cheese so it needs to be highly acidified before the curd can stretch So let that uh, rehydrate for five minutes. And then we're going to give it a good stir, mix that in well. And then we're going to let the milk acidify now for 45 minutes. So after 45 minutes, going to give it a good stir. Just check the temperature again. Make sure that's uh, 37. Yep, close enough. And then we're going to add the calcium chloride to it. Just tip that in while you're stirring the milk. And then give that a good stir for about a minute. So that's just going to help the curd to set because the milk has been pasteurized. Now we're going to add in the rennet next. And stirring whilst we're pouring that in. That was diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. Now the reason it's non-chlorinated is because the chlor chlorinated water will kill the action of the rennet. And we're going to let that set now for 45 minutes. So 45 minutes later, we're going to check for a clean break. So now we can just slide our knife in, pull it up, see if it splits cleanly. The other way of doing it is to put your finger in and see if it splits cleanly. And it is no problems at all. So that's a clean break. We're ready to cut the curd into two centimeter or three quarters of an inch cubes. Now I'm not using my trusty curd cutter in this video because that's about 1.25 centimeters. So I need it a bit larger, so I'm using the knife for the whole thing. So to do the horizontal cuts, I am cutting at a 45 degree angle, and hopefully getting most of the big pieces down the bottom. Now I can always get them when I'm stirring later on. So we're gonna let that heal for five minutes. Just pop the lid on. So now for 30 minutes, we're going to stir, keeping the temperature at 37 Celsius um, or 99 Fahrenheit, which was the target temperature. Now those curds are going to shrink a heck of a lot during that 30 minutes. If there are any big bits, just make sure you cut them up. Now that's the final curd size for this portion anyway. Now we're going to let that settle to the bottom for 10 minutes. So 
So we're going to wash the curds to take a little bit of the acidity out. So we're going to remove 30% of the whey down to about an inch from the top of the curd mass. Now you can use this whey for making ricotta or my sauce or anything you use whey for, nice smoothie, what have you. So once you're down at the level, I'm see I'm using a sieve and a ladle there, that works quite well. I don't get any curd chunks into the whey I'm tipping out. Now it got a bit full, I needed to take a little bit more out, so I just had to go and put that in a big bowl for use later on. And back again, and we're going to put a little bit more in there. So it's about two and a half litres I took out of the, of the whey. So now we're going to replace it with water that has been heated to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit and that'll bring the target temperature up to 42 Celsius or 108 Fahrenheit. So oh, stir that while you're pouring the water in just to make sure that the curds don't mat. We bring that up to the level of the original way. And you can usually see there's a line on there, so easy enough to do. Just make sure you check your temperature. At 42. I think it went over about by 0.1 of a degree, so that's pretty good. So now we're going to stir that for 30 minutes just to wash the curds. So 30 minutes later, there's the size of the curd. So now we're going to let it rest uh, in the pot for an hour. And this is where the acidification is going to happen. The, uh, the lactic bacteria, the thermophilic culture, is going to continue to acidify. Don't forget to heat up five litres or five quarts of water up to 85 or 100. 85 Fahrenheit whilst um, that curd is resting. So then pour it into your cheesecloth lined colander and just pat it down to form a bit of a uh, slab. I'm going to drain that for 10 minutes until the curd mats together. So it only did take 10 minutes for mine. So pop the curd mass onto the chopping board and we're going to cut it into 5 centimetre or two inch cube, so rather large. So you can see they're quite wide. So the height of the cubes is only about an inch high. So um, pop all those into a large bowl and just kind of make sure they're kind of level-ish. Now we're gonna grab that water that we heated up to 85 Celsius or 185 Fahrenheit, and we're going to fill the bowl up. So get your trusty cup again. So we're gonna fill it up to the level of the curds. So it's just covering them. Now this is where all the magic happens in this cheese. So up until now it's pretty simple, pretty ordinary sort of cheese making, but I got quite excited when I got to this spot because I've never done it before. Now it is really hot, so don't put your finger out like I did. Now using a wooden spoon, or if you've got some heat proof gloves, rubber gloves, then you could actually do this by hand, but I chose to do it um, with a wooden spoon that I'd sanitized. And what you're trying to do is get all of the, uh, the curd cubes to melt into one big curd lump. Now you may have to put a little bit more hot water in. Oh, I didn't use it all. And as you can see, it does all melt into one big mass and it starts to get a bit stretchy, as you can see with the two spoons there. That is a bit messy because I kept spilling the water all over the place. But I managed to get it into one big ball, which is good. And yeah, it stretched okay, it was all good. So the good thing was that the curds had acidified properly over that um, 
uh, that one hour resting period. So now I did put some gloves on. I could have put them on earlier. So we're going to stretch the cheese a little bit just so it has a stretchy bit. So it's like stretchy um, string cheese. So I had a bit of fun doing this. So I wanted to see how, um, how long I could stretch it. Anyway, after I stopped mucking around with it, I shaped it into a bowl. I had a, uh, into a ball, sorry. I had a mould there, and I was going to always press it into the mould, so I made sure that I did it under the water um, so it would uh, melt in place, which it seemed to do okay. It was all good. You could have um, put it into a ball, um, which would get a shiny surface on it, um, but uh, I, I chose to use a mould because I wanted to put it into... Uh, I wanted to store some away. Anyway, you pop the uh, the ball or the mould into iced water for 15 minutes um, so it then holds its shape. It cools down rapidly and you can see there that it's fully submersed. That water was at about 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, after the, uh, the cooling period, I'm going to place it into our brine for 30 or between 30 and 60 minutes. 30 if you like it lightly salted, 60 if you like it heavily salted. So pop it in your brine. Your brine has to be cool. It can't be warm or it'll melt. Now you can enjoy it now or store it for up to two weeks in the fridge. Well, there you go. You can see that that cheese was pretty simple to make. There was a few technical steps, but uh, just as long as you make sure that the cheese is adequ adequately acidified, then you won't have any problems with stretching it at the end. It gets a little bit messy, but uh, I should have put some rubber gloves on earlier than I did and uh, I would have been able to stretch it a lot easier. Now I did put it in a mould, um, it made it a little bit easier. You can put it into a shiny ball, um, that's no problems at all, and then dunk it in the ice water, then into the brine. But I chose to put it in a mould, nice easy shape, and that way I could vac pack half of it um, to eat later on. You can also see another pasta filata cheese that I've made, this is called Quick Mozzarella. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to pledge your support for the channel, click through to Patreon here and uh, it'll keep the videos rolling. All right, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and we'll see you next time.